Hey everyone, I have a very special guest with me today. She is freaking awesome, a rock star, Miss <laughs> Dr. Miss Dr. Corey Prost. She is our vice president, our health psychologist, um, and our wellness director. So thank you so much for being here today. So excited to have you. Um, Oh, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Yes. And so one of the things I want to talk about with you today is our mindset, because a lot of times we think diet, we think, okay, I just need to focus on my nutrition. I need to focus on my exercise and that's it. But the most important part where it starts with is your mindset, how you process everything. So today I want to ask you and go over how do we shift our mindset for a better weight loss? I love this question. I love the topic. <laughs> That's why I do what I do. Right. <laughs> it starts there. It starts there. Those practical skills, how do I log my food, you know, understanding macronutrients, what is this doing for my body? All that stuff is incredibly important, but we we begin to understand and we take on those challenges by pers like with an attitude. Right. That's literally what mindset is. It's an attitude, how we're mm -hmm. thinking. But I think to really answer this question, we have to consider too, like the current state of the weight loss industry. You know, despite more people exercising, like people are exercising and more people are starting to exercise mm -hmm. and more people actually engaging in weight loss, people weigh more. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> What's happening here? Yeah. Uh, the mindset that many people go into weight loss with is it's a generally it's generally a pretty shallow one. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, we're looking at n not what we can achieve in the shortest amount of time, and this is how many people go into it. This is how they're thinking: like I just want it gone yesterday, mm -hmm. right? But what we can achieve that will net us the greatest gains over the most areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. So we're going, we're going for breadth and we're going for depth. Mm -hmm. That's how we want to be thinking about it. The other thing to consider is that a lot of people who set the goal of weight loss don't, they, they really genuinely don't know that much about the food environment mm -hmm. or the, the intricate dynamics that even prompt them to eat. We are, we're shoved in a lot of different directions every day without our even knowing it. We're primed in different ways by the environment and by people. And then, you know, the food industry itself and its tactics to make us eat more and want more and crave more and not stop. <laughs> so, or even the physiology of fat loss, which is what we really help our clients understand. All of these things we help our clients understand, but Diets are literally, to me, like traditional diets. Right. Not the diets that the diet doc offers. <laughs> They're like asking a brand new baby to run down to the corner store and grab some milk. <laughs> um, in other words, Tanya, I, you know, we have to shift into a practice mindset. Mm -hmm. So, like, babies fall down. Right. They're learning how to walk. And they may cry but they get up and try again and again and again mm -hmm. and again and again adult dieters fall down and they go eat the entire sleeve of oreos and they say i'll start again on monday right so the mindset has to be oh crap that didn't go so well like okay how am i going to get through this what mistakes were made what went well the rest of the day you know if your car breaks down or you know, you get a flat tire when you're driving somewhere. Do you go slash the other three tires? No, probably not. That yeah. really wouldn't make much sense. Oh, yeah, we do that with our diet all the time. All the time. Yes. So like I said before, I think if we look at what a mindset is, it's a way of thinking. It's an attitude. And the best way, because you asked, like, how do we shift it? The best way to shift a mindset is to really first understand and be aware of what our current mindset is. Mm -hmm. How are we thinking? Mm -hmm. You know, how are we, what is the attitude that we're bringing to this process or this mm -hmm. circumstance or this event? Um, and that takes observation and reflection. You know, we could start just deciding that we're going to watch ourselves. I'm just going to start paying attention. How am I thinking about this? When I go into that, when I go to this restaurant, what is, what is my attitude? 
am I thinking like, this is going to be, I'm going to totally botch this. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be able to make a good decision. You know, I'm so freaking worried about what everyone else is going to think about me. I'm just going to order whatever the person next to me does. Mm -hmm. Is it like that? Or, um, you know, we could also ask people who we trust, like, how am I in situations? You know, when That's something, gets, yeah, it, it, well, it can be so enlightening. It's like hundred percent. We typically don't ask others to tell us about ourselves. Yeah. And a lot of things we don't recognize or even know that we're doing. Right. <laughs> So if we're open to it and we, we have to genuinely trust this person and trust that they have our best interest in mind, you didn't just go ask anyone, um, but it can be really enlightening and you can ask them like, what do I say? Or when, when it gets, something gets really hard and it gets difficult and you can tell I'm stressed, mm -hmm. what do I do? Another question, like what are the triggers that move me from being kind of open and expansive and curious? to like uh, tight and rigid and reactive. Like what sorts of situations does that happen in? And then when are we at our best and what does that actually look like? And what does it feel like? Mm -hmm. And if I were to move into this next situation with that feeling, what would I be thinking? Right. What would, what would the beliefs be going into it? Right. So, you know, we also know Tanya, that a learning oriented mindset is the best one. Exactly. Otherwise known as a growth mindset. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've heard this a lot. Um, and it sets a really strong foundation for uh, other attitudes like perseverance and resolve and resilience and endurance and problem solving. Um, the other thing to consider too, is that the questions that we ask ourselves are really important here. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, they direct our focus. I'm like, we, we can all say, I want a slice of pizza, but what should I actually be eating? Like, it really will change the course of the rest of your day. Exactly. How do I want to feel? Not necessarily right now, because we can be really impulsive. Well, yeah. I, I want that slice of pizza because it tastes good. I'm going to feel really good right now. Mm -hmm. How am I going to feel when my head hits the pillow at the end of the day and I'm reviewing the choices that I made? Right. Yeah. So it helps to come up with questions that will drive us in generative ways and towards generative behaviors and value driven behaviors when we're not in the thick of the impulsive moment. So what would be like a couple of examples of what questions could people ask when they feel emotional or, you know, they, they have to start from square one again? Well, so here's what's interesting. If we're feeling really emotionally volatile and hyped up and just like anxious, we're in that really crazy moment. Mm -hmm. That part of our brain that can reason mm -hmm. is literally kind of like a little bit offline <laughs> because the deeper, more emotional parts of our brain are like all lit up. Mm -hmm. So something that will work in a moment when we're not all emotionally up um, better is something sensory. So in that moment when you're like, oh, like craving is here, we need to be doing something like box breathing, something bodily, not cognitive in our minds, but bodily, like big deep breath for four seconds in, hold it for four seconds, exhale for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, repeat. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to reactivate the parasympathetic, okay, calmer now, parasympathetic nervous system. Now my cortex, prefrontal cortex, area of the brain that will allow me to ask a question mm -hmm. and reason comes back online. How cool. And you know what? I actually have that on my Fitbit where you have like a two minute breathing and it'll breathe in for four, nice. hold it. So for those who have a Fitbit, next time you feel that emotional that Corey just said, push play. Yes, absolutely. Hit the button. Yeah, hit the button. <laughs> and see how you feel in just a few minutes. How cool. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the strategy is different depending on kind of 
and this is this is why observation is so important to begin to un, like notice okay what's going on here for me right now well i'm really keyed up okay right. then i need to be doing something sensory and bodily because thinking right now probably not going to be a, the best strategy right <laughs> I like you bring that up. that's all my brain is saying pizza <laughs> get it now how cool of something so simple of just just doing something internal not your mindset can completely change just your thought process and give you in a calmer state just by breathing and i think a lot of people don't realize how much oxygen is what it does to your body it's amazing absolutely yeah and it's just the, the act of, because if you notice when you're keyed up and anxious, you're in that crazy moment, you're, you're feeling like driven, right? Mm -hmm. To go do something that really not in your best interest. There's, you're, you're not, you're barely breathing. Mm -hmm. You're like oh, exactly you're really shallow <laughs> like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you know, just throughout the day, notice guys, it doesn't have to do, doesn't have to do, does not have to have to do what? What am I saying? I understand you. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Take food out of it. Right. During the day, notice like at work, if your shoulders are up around your ears and you're just feeling like meh, kind of buzzy, notice where your breathing is. It's probably not deep. <laughs> yeah. That's when you push play. So really what you're saying and what I'm getting is to better shift our mindset for a more su successful weight loss is Take a step back and just observe what's going on and see how you're handling it at the restaurant when you're emotional. Observe and listen to what's going on. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Perfectly said. How yeah. simple is that? Because a lot of times yeah. I, I feel like we have a thought, we believe it's true, and we just accept it instead of questioning it, looking, okay, how am I feeling? Why am I acting? Why did I make this decision when I knew something but like what made me why am i constantly doing this when i know i shouldn't be and it's so you know, cool you hear, that. yeah you will you hear clients say a lot like i know what to do i'm just not doing it mm -hmm. and I, it does often times come down to you know we we believe we are our thoughts mm -hmm. instead of these are thoughts i'm not them like yeah. i can actually look at my thought i can see it's a string of words and then I can ask myself, like, what effect is believing this thought having on me? Right. Am I my, who am I when I believe this thought? Mm -hmm. Who do I, who would I much rather be? Yeah. How do, how do I feel when I believe this thought? Well, I feel discouraged and I feel down and I feel disappointed. Mm -hmm. Well, what thought moves you in a more empowered feeling and oriented direction? Mm -hmm. how about we start practicing believing those thoughts and thinking those thoughts more often yeah. as we're going into you know these difficult situations how cool and then when you lay your head to bed you're going to be happier of delayed gratification and how you handle the situation differently and it will be a ripple effect of your yep. weight loss progress very positively reinforcing yeah yeah because it builds up your confidence. Oh, I can do this. And it actually wasn't as hard as I may, I've been making it be. Yeah. But it, it just takes somebody like for you to say, pay attention to what you're thinking. Now, everyone who's listening to this, they're gonna be like, they're gonna think about it. <laughs> like, why did I think that? What should I change? Is this how I wanna feel? How do I really wanna feel? Like, as soon as you bring that up, I bet everyone's gonna be messaging me, Tanya, I've been breathing all day. You know, I've been paying attention. Like, it's, not, it's just, just someone to remind us to pay attention, to take a step back and yeah. evaluate what is going on. I know mm -hmm. what I need to be doing. Why am I not doing it? it it's totally a mind shift. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a mind shift. And like I said, the questions are really important because oftentimes we'll ask a question that isn't really a question. So mm -hmm. for example, like, why did I do that? Like, are you really, are you going to sit down and answer that question and like process that question? Or is it just a shaming, blaming epithet? Like mm -hmm. you're so stupid. They mm -hmm. sound exactly the same. They're just different words. Mm -hmm. So the questions need to invite. If you're going to ask yourself a question, have it be an invitational question that actually, you know, has you move into exploration and a sense of discovery. Like, 
I wonder what contributed to that behavior. How cool. Not what a great why did you do that? I wonder what contributed to that behavior. Now that's something you could actually journal on. Yeah. How cool. I, I love all this new stuff that you're, you're bringing <laughs> because I know not a lot of people are considering asking themselves different questions. We've asked the same, yeah. what am I doing wrong? Or why did I do that for the last like 20, 30, 40, 50 years? And it's not yes. getting us anywhere. Well, and two, I'll say this before we probably want to move on to the next question. Yeah, we can talk, talk about this morning. all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to consider that it's not just us, too. Mm -hmm. We are highly influenced by the people around us and our environments. You know, if someone starts, like, if you had a friend, Tanya, who bought a new car recently, you may begin to notice that you're thinking about new cars. Mm -hmm. Looking at new cars, and you're like, Hmm. I mean, we are primed in so many ways with our, in the food environment, especially. Right. Yeah. We begin to eat like the people around us. We begin to talk like the people around us. We develop the same mannerisms as people around us. You know, simple example, if I'm around people who are cussing a lot, Corey starts cussing more. I don't like cussing, but I start cussing. <laughs> like, <laughs> the culture is highly, highly influential. So asking the question like, what is everything, everything around me, environmentally, relationally, mm -hmm. psychologically, what is everything that's contributing to this situation? And what do I actually have an influence over? Yeah, I think that's a great thing. Like I always tell people, grab a piece of paper and a pen out and write down these questions and have them in front of you because you're not going to remember after this and write down some key points that you can reflect back and you know, take it upon yourself the next seven days to start incorporating these little things, asking yourself different questions, observing and seeing what influence, you know, what your friends are influencing you with, good or bad, like, what do you need mm -hmm. to change? I, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, so my next question for you is, and this yeah. is huge, and I love to bring it up, is how do people overcome the fear of failure, which kind of makes them not want to start a new diet because they go, I failed on the last 30. I've gained more. How do I overcome that fear? So I think what I want to say first, Tanya, is that it's not about winning or losing. And your clients who listen to me regularly hear me say this word repeatedly. It's about practicing. Ah. So <laughs> that's my like one of my favorite words on the planet. It's all practice. It's mm -hmm. all practice. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure is a perfectionist problem. Perfectionists mm -hmm. aren't practicing. They have to get it perfect and they have to get it right and spot on. It's not about practice for them. Um, but so I, uh, let me tell you a little story. <laughs> so this weekend I was on my mountain bike uh -huh. and it literally, literally is the third time I've been on it. Like. I was terrified. I was supposed to go on a road ride. It's our Saturday club ride with my partner, Ben. And <laughs> it was a longer one. It was like 60 miles. Typically our rides are around 40. He comes downstairs. We need to leave in about an hour. And I know this face. I know this face. I know what's coming when he's like, I don't want to go. And I look at him and I'm like, why? He's like, well, I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, what are you scared of? He said, I, I know that I'm going to be so tired at 40 miles. The last 20 are just going to be horrible. They're going to be awful. And I, you know, I'm like, he's like, I haven't trained, I haven't trained enough. I haven't trained for these longer rides. And I'm like, yeah, that, I mean, it might feel pretty rough. Um, I'll ride with you though. I'll ride with you the last 20 miles. This isn't a race. I don't, I don't need to beat everyone. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and we go back and forth a little bit and I have this event coming up on the 14th and this is, this is a training ride for me. And I'm like, mm. he's like, I really don't want to go. And he's like, we could go mountain biking. 
and I looked at him and I was like, I would really much rather be on my road bike than mountain biking, sweetheart. But he's like, we'll go to this trail. He names this trail. And I, I'm immediately like keyed up mm -hmm. because I'm terrible. Like mountain biking still freaks me out. I am a complete amateur <laughs> spaz on a mountain bike. Like road biking, despite the fall that I had, like in the accident road, I'm comfortable, comfortable mm -hmm. on a road bike. I agreed. I agreed to go. Tanya, I had set this goal beginning of the year, beginning of 2020, when Ben got me a mountain bike for Christmas. I said, okay, I have to go at least once per month. I mean, I made it super reasonable goal, right? Like right. only one time in 30 days, 20 to 30 days, do I need to go ride my mountain bike? Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll go. And I went to the bathroom, seriously, number two, five times before we left to go <laughs> find the trail, right? But so here, here is what happened. Like I, I was, I didn't know, I, I didn't know it was going to come around each corner. I didn't know right. what to expect. I didn't know whether there was going to be a massive hill to try to like go as fast as I could up. And you know, there's a lot of skills that I am completely unfamiliar with. And I don't know what I don't know. And this mm -hmm. is what a lot of our clients are getting into when they come to see us, mm -hmm. despite numerous attempts and not, not making it a sustainable endeavor, mm -hmm. like they don't know a lot. So it makes sense. It makes sense to me that they would come in with this fear of failure. I, I'm doing it again, but I'm like something... I don't, <laughs> for something's not right here because I'm doing it again. Mm -hmm. Well, as we're on the trail, like I'm no, like I am tense the entire time. This is a three hour ride and I am just, I'm not having fun. Mm -hmm. And l me being me, I'm like, okay, what's my mindset? What am I believing right now? I literally, literally Tony, I'm on the bike feeling like I'm going to fall down the hill. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make it up the hill. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get over that rock. Yeah. And the minute, the minute, the second I started thinking, wait a second, why do you, why do you have to do this perfectly, Corey? Right. Like who said that you had to be an instant mountain biking expert? Yeah, granted, you're riding with the guy who's been riding for 30 years and can't even remember what it was like to be on a bike for the third time in his life, but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You are where you are. This is not about winning or losing or failing at all. You are on this trail with him to practice. To practice. So here's what happened. I didn't overcome my fear of failure. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that's what it's about at all. It's more that we learn to, when we notice it's there, we learn to walk with it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to get rid of the fear to take the steps or to go on the journey. We mm -hmm. just need to learn how to allow in the big whys that we have mm -hmm. so that the big whys that we have can take fear by the arms. Mm -hmm. You know, they're walking arm in arm <laughs> in the same direction. And our whys get to converse with the fear and be like, look, dude, here's what's happening. This mm -hmm. is the way it's gonna go. Here's mm -hmm. the mindset we're gonna go into this with. You can totally be there. You can be there. I don't care. We're, gonna we're still going. Finish. And it's not about being perfect. It's no. the more you do it, the more practice you get, the easier it's going to be. And you're going to feel so much better. I, I love that word, that word practice. And it changes the whole perspective of fear yes. of failure. I mean, yeah. it's so many people are like OCD and just all in. And I go, I don't need you to be all in. I need you to practice. Mm -hmm. And you yep. will get better. If you go all in like that and expect to be a professional of flexible dieting in a day, you're no, just you're, it, the so experience will be ruined. Yeah. It exactly. will ruin the entire experience. There's no joy in that. It's like we choke the joy out yes. of it. Yes. And, and I could tell when you asked yourself a different question as you're writing it, 
Like, I don't need to be, yeah. like, I don't need to compare myself to someone who's been writing it a lot longer than me. Like, I could just feel a shift in energy from being, oh. I got to do this to, hey, you know, it's, it's totally different. And I appreciate you bringing that up because a lot of people, once they shift that mindset and ask those different questions, they're going to enjoy their day better, their progress better, the whole thing so much better because of that. Yeah. You know, wake up in the morning and ask, okay, what am I practicing today? Uh, did you hear that? You better write that down. What am I practicing <laughs> today? I'm going to ask all my clients that. What are you practicing today? What are you practicing? I, I love that. So I want to finish off with one last question, and that okay. is, how do people find hope in reaching their goals once and for all reaching them? So... You listened to another video of mine and commented, and I think I had listed like, there was something I said about hope that struck you, I think. Um, hope is, it's a profoundly important strength mm -hmm. that exists within us. We all have what are called 24 character strengths mm -hmm. within us. Most of us are not even familiar with what those are. Right. But hope is one of those most associated with happiness mm -hmm. and it's got two components to it the first component is we'll call it the will mm -hmm. and the second component is the way mm -hmm. and the will is what is like driving us forward it's the belief that i can move in the direction of my goals so mm -hmm. these are the whys we can imagine these as our whys mm -hmm. okay the way includes the, the practical steps that need to be taken in order to move closer to the goal. Mm -hmm. And we can imagine these as our hows, the whys and the hows. Right. That's what make up hope. So I think we can garner a lot of hope by focusing on both, but especially by recognizing that there, there's never just one way to reach a goal. Right. That gives me a lot of hope. It's like, there's, n there's not just one path. Exactly, yes. I don't have to do it this one way. I don't have to learn to ride a bike the same way Ben learned how to ride a mountain bike. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I think sitting down and listing out the options, mm -hmm. how might I learn how to do this, can be incredibly hopeful because we can see that we're just not limited to one strategy. Uh, I would recommend sitting down, writing out the goal that we want to accomplish. If this is a weight loss goal, cool. List three ways you can reach it and, and why you can. Here's why I can. Here are the assets and the tools and the strategies and the people and the environments and the capacities and the internal strengths that I've got. Here's why I can. That's going to instill a lot of hope in you. Here's why I can learn how to ride a mountain bike. I've learned how to ride a road bike. Mm -hmm. I've finished a PhD for mm -hmm. goodness sake. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I have the perseverance to do something, right. <laughs> the stamina, the endurance. Right. So, I mean, I can feel myself getting like a little pumped up and hopeful when I, when I think about those things. So sit down and write those things down. Um, those are great. Another way, Tanya, would be to instill hope. Write out what your best possible self looks like. Like, consider yourself one year from now. Who mm -hmm. are you? Mm -hmm. How are you acting? Mm -hmm. You know, what actions are you taking on a regular basis? How are you thinking? Mm -hmm. What are the thoughts that you think regularly? What does your self-talk sound like? Okay. What's your attitude? Because hope is... It's really, it's aspirational, which means that it, it helps us to look ahead and into the future and to see a positive future. Mm -hmm. uh, and visualizing that future is a really powerful method to create the vision that we can hold with us and to use during challenging times. Yes. Yeah. I, wow, that is, that's so great. I, I guarantee so many people are going to re-listen to this a couple of times because the, the key points that you make, the questions people can ask, you know, no other, no other diet or anything 
I've ever heard of this before of all those little tools that you can use to, for a better sustainable mm -hmm. life. And, and like you said, it's not just weight loss. You can apply these questions in so many that's different it. areas of your life. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. before we go, I just have one question and that's to tie this everything in. What's your, you know, one little nugget or one thing that you can share with people how to overall, you know, shift that mindset um, with their weight loss, with any goals that fear of failure. What's one thing that before we go, how you can finish it off? One thing. Just one. <laughs> We're only That's talking it. for 30 That's minutes. It. One thing. That's it. So I, I, I'm literally working with a client right now who she is trying to do so much at the oh. same time her list of to do's and responsibilities in an effort to accomplish this goal is like a mile long. Right. She can't function. It's like, right. where do I freaking start? And when oh, we get in that position, it's now I'm not going to do anything. Right. We're, Oh, it feel it's just, it's overwhelming. We feel overcome because we, our mind is like, blah, 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 blah. it's mm. splitting here and there and it has nothing to land on. Yeah. So the just one thing is choose one thing. There you go. One thing. One Perfect. thing right now. Right. right now. One thing. Write it down. Commit to it every day. Practice it. What am I practicing? You're practicing that one thing every day for the yep. next week. That's your challenge for the next seven days. I there love it. Well, thank you, Corey, so much for being on here and sharing your amazing just – knowledge and your communication and just so many great tools that we can apply for the rest of our lives. So I want to say thanks for being on here and I know we will see you again. Yes, I hope so. Thank you so much, Tanya. I appreciate right. it. You're welcome. Well, thanks for being on here and uh, we'll see everyone later. Have a great day. Bye guys.